In this episode, uh, with the title Green Technology, uh, Insignior Siva Priya, who's from Multimedia University. And uh, the esteemed, um, esteemed renowned Otai Orang Kuat uh, STEM, Dr. Isan Ismail from Pusat STEM Negara. Hi. All right, so thank you very much for being with us. Do stay with us until the end of this session. Uh, we have these two speakers who will be sharing with you uh, green technology and how things going to be um, in the future in terms of STEM-related career and also this field. Okay, thank you very much, Natalia. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And a big shout out to all the children who have taken time off your very busy schedules to join me today online to learn about what green technology is. I understand that you're very, very busy with your online classes and your online assignments, but trust me, this is one of the informations that will be very valuable for you because green technology is in our everyday practices and we all must start practicing green technology very seriously because it will help to conserve the environment and preserve our nature for the generations to come. Now, I would like to share some slides with you, uh, but before I share the slides, maybe I can throw a question at you. How many of you know what green technology is? If I were to define green technology, green technology is defined as a clean technology. A clean technology means it does not uh, uh, produce any harmful emissions or pollutants to the environment as a byproduct of this technological process. A good example of green technology is nuclear energy. Although nuclear energy is a complicated process, it does not produce any harmful carbon dioxide, which is released into the environment and further aggravates the greenhouse effect. Therefore, nuclear energy is known as a green technology. In a broader context today, green technology is also accepted if the technology that you create does not produce waste or it also is able to reuse some of the waste as another power source. So if you are able to produce a technology that maybe uses wastewater as a power source, then you have yourself a green technology. Now I'm going to share some slides with you to further understand what green technology is. So as introduced by uh, Ms. Natalia, I'm from the Faculty of Engineering, Multimedia University, and um, I'm attached to the Center for Electric Energy and Automation, where we do a lot of technological research for green technology. Now coming back to green technology, what are the goals of green technology? The goal of green technology is to create a sustainable innovation that will provide a positive feedback to the environment in the short term and in the long term. This is achieved by designing a system which has reduced emissions, uses less energy intensity, conserves water, uses less material, and reduces the amount of waste that is produced by it. Now I'm going to show you some examples of green technology. I think a lot of you are very familiar with the solar cells and the windmills, which harness the power of sunlight and the wind generate electricity. These two technologies reduce our reliance on grid power to power our homes and the industries. The LED lights that you use at home are also a form of green technology. The LED light uses significantly less energy compared to its counterpart, the filament bulb. A new technology known as vertical farming is a good example of green technology. If you can imagine, once upon a time, our agriculture was spread out into a vast field. Just imagine all the paddy fields that we have in Malaysia. How much land is it taking? Now take that vastly spread out agricultural land and put it in stacks and you will see how much space you can actually see. Therefore, vertical farming can be easily done in urban areas where there is lack of space. Vertical farming has a lot of advantages. For example, it can be done in the urban area, so we reduce the cost for transportation of agricultural products, of food products from the rural areas to the urban areas. Furthermore, vertical farming uses 
a lot of abandoned buildings as a factory where this vertical farming is done. Therefore, we are not wasting. We are in fact reducing the waste. The waste is the abandoned building. And because vertical farming is done in a controlled climate, it guarantees the amount of crops that we can get. And therefore, there will be lack of famine and lack of food. There will not be any lack of food. Another good thing about vertical farming is that it controls how the pollutants are, are released into the waters and into the lands. As you know, recently, we've been having a lot of water disruption due to uncontrolled pollutants into our water sources. Now, vertical farming will not have this problem because the way that the waste from vertical farming is managed is, is uh, very efficient. Another type of green technology is composting. Now, composting is something that your grandmothers and your mothers are actually doing. In fact, I think some of you are also doing it. We take the vegetable peels and we take the fruit peels and we put it into our soil. And after three to four months, you find that the soil has decomposed, the, the waste has decomposed into a type of soil, which is so rich in nutrients that you can use it as a fertilizer for your plantations. Electrical vehicles is a concept that we are all aware of also. In fact, it is a concept that is gaining much popularity in Malaysia. It is very, very widely used in countries like Japan and Korea and in the European subcontinent. Electrical vehicles do not release harmful emissions to the environment because they do not use petrol. Instead, they use electricity to run the car. Smart homes are another concept of green technology. Smart homes help us to manage the power of our equipment and appliances at home by using technologies such as Internet of Things and AI. This in itself will help us to control the cost of our electricity bills every month. And lastly, a new concept that is being introduced under green technology is RF energy harvesting. This, in this concept, the uh, telecommunication equipment, they harvest their own energy from another telecommunication equipment, and therefore it reduces their reliance on the grid power. Green buildings are a concept where the building itself is able to sustain itself without the requirement for external power or external water sources. Now, for example, the green building would use a system known as rainwater harvesting. Actually, you can do rainwater harvesting at home too. You just have to put out a big uh, container and capture rainwater and you can use this rainwater for washing or for watering your plants. Please don't drink this water because the water has not been treated and you need to add other things into the water before you're able to drink it. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, thank you for joining uh, this session. Uh, I'm Esa Ismail, currently the head of National STEM Center at, or Pusat STEM Negara at the Ministry of Education Malaysia. Actually, I was a teacher. I was uh, teaching at one of the schools in Sabah, uh, SMK Morotai Besar, Tawar Sabah, uh, way back in 1995, uh, from 95 up to 1999. And then I furthered my study. I, I did my master at UKM from 1999 uh, until 2001. And after that, I was posted to Educational Planning and Research Division, you know, eh, EPRD. And I was given the task to head uh, the initiative of STEM education uh, starting in 2016 and when the National STEM Center was established in 2018, uh, I was uh, asked to uh, head that center until now. Yeah. Okay, um, so today I'm going to talk about the importance of STEM education. I know um, currently we are having problem with the interest of our students to join STEM package. Eh? For example, uh, now at the Form 4 level, we have uh, three different STEM package, package A, B, and C, and quite we are, we are quite worried and very sad actually because the percentage of students who are taking STEM package currently is uh, less than 40% or even maybe just around 30%. We, have, we don't have the, the official figure yet, but uh, if we just use the previous year figure, the percentage is about 43%. And this year, it might drop. Um, actually, we have a 
policy called 60-40 policy where we want 60% of our students uh, enrolled in STEM package. But uh, it seems that it is the other, the other way around now. It is 40-60 for STEM and non-STEM. Um, so uh, that's why we are doing this uh, STEM initiative because uh, we want to uh, increase the interest among our students uh, to, to STEM and also increase the competency of our teachers and awareness of our parents and community about STEM education. Because um, it is quite uh, normal for us to hear that um, it, uh, STEM is difficult, uh, we cannot get a job if we enroll in STEM. Actually, that is not true. So um, that's why uh, we are doing this uh, kind of program to give the awareness uh, to give you a, a clearer information about the importance of STEM so that uh, we are hoping that um, in a few years time the number of students who are joining STEM package will be increased. Yeah? So uh, let me just uh, share my slide now. the importance of STEM education. Okay, um, now I'm sure most of you are aware that we are in an era called fourth industrial revolution, where in this era, there are the emergence of new technologies, for example, AI as mentioned by uh, Siva just now, uh, IoT or Internet of Things, blockchain, 3D printing, in fact, uh, we are going to 4D and 5D printing now. Uh, we have AR, VR, robotic, big data, cloud computing, and a lot of other new technologies. And these technologies change the, lo the, the job landscape. So the jobs that you are seeing, seeing now is uh, actually different from what uh, we know before previously, especially in my days as students. And in fact, in 5, 10, 15 years time, it's going to be a lot more different. Uh, there, my uh, we will see job that is not exist yet. Yeah. So that's why, uh, in order for you for students to get the new job, you must have the skill what we call as STEM based skills. That's why it is important for you at the moment to prepare yourself with the STEM based skills so that you can get the job that will be that is not in existence yet and that will be there in the future. When you graduate in 10, 15, 20 years time, when you are in the workforce, uh, you will need these STEM skills to do that job. Yeah? So um, let us just uh, watch this video why STEM is important. Why STEM? So um, we do have, as you can see in the video, we do have a lot of great STEM talents in Malaysia. And I hope that many of you will become a STEM talent, great STEM talent for Malaysia in the future. Yeah. So um, since uh, we have a different job landscape in the future, starting from um, a few years time, 